I love learning about the history of Newcastle and Tyneside and I'm busy working my way through this history book on the Tyne Bridge, not just the one that's currently there now, going back 1900 years when the Romans built the first Tyne Bridge where the current Swing Bridge is now. Anyway, in this video, I'm going to talk about the latest news that's been happening this week. It's coming up. First bit of news, obviously England are through to the quarter-final of the World Cup after beating Senegal in the face France, which is going to be a really tough match. And for the last 16 match, I was at the Fed Brewery in Dunstan, um, where Gaza was there um, hosting a kind of a conversation evening on stage. I put a video out for that. If you haven't seen it, I would employ you to watch it. It's over an hour long. It's Gaza stripped back, and it really has divided opinion. Um, whether you think he's a, an absolute legend and he could murder a kid and you wouldn't be bothered or you think he's an absolute embarrassment or if you're somewhere a little bit more sympathetic and kind of worry about him because of his alcoholism and mental health issues wherever you stand on that um, it certainly does divide opinion I, I, would, I would kind of encourage you to watch the whole video um, it's him stripped back like I say if you're easily offended I wouldn't watch it it's, uh, it can be quite controversial with some of the language and terminology that he uses. Where am I going to watch the France match? Well, you're just going to have to wait and see. I've tried the big venues, the big fan zones, they're great. Somewhere this time is going to be a little bit different. Let's just say it's, um, it's an interesting um, venue that I'm going to be watching the World Cup. Nonetheless, um, you won't be disappointed. In fact, I might, be, I might be putting myself at a little bit of risk. Next bit of news, I've got something to tell you about the metro system. So while we're on about the metro system, I've just got on the metro where I live at Pilo, and on the board it said the next train is 18 minutes. Now this isn't uh, uncommon now, uh, where you can actually wait about 15 to 20 minutes, but actually the train arrived about two minutes later, so there's all sorts of disruption going on. It used to be the metros were really reliable almost every day. Uh, there was a train every six or seven minutes. It was very rare to have any disruption in my experience now. You know, I use the metro most days three, four times a week now. There's some sort of disruption. Um, there's now, even though the metros have opened up between Pilo and South Shields, shut down again for some sort of technical issues that they're having to get on top of. If anybody out there can tell me what's going on with the Tyne Weir metro system, why it's becoming really unreliable, um, I'd appreciate it. Just uh, leave your comments. Below. Talking about the metro system, local government have put a 745 million pound bid into central government to extend the Tainanuia metro system to take in Washington and to build three new stations. It's all part of a, a huge regeneration programme for our local rail and metro transport infrastructure. I'll keep you updated as to how that goes. Now of course winter is finally here and for some people, especially this year, they're going to really struggle to keep warm and just to get by um, so local councils in this whole region have set up what they call winter wellbeing centres. Get a, a hot brew, um, charge up your gadgets, uh, use the toilets, use the Wi-Fi, just generally somewhere to hang around uh, just to keep warm. Um, and for you, what I've done for this particular video, I've went to visit two or three. So you've got the Alphabetti Theatre at Bar and Cafe just behind me on St James's Boulevard from 11 till 11. You can pop in, stay as long as you want. No obligation to spend any money. The teas and coffees are a pound if you want. Where, if you want some beverages, uh, they do free Wi-Fi. Uh, yeah, you can just sit and chill out uh, in a warm space right behind us. And just up the road from the Alphabetti Theatre, you've got this place behind me, the Dance City Dance Studios on St James's Boulevard. Again, you can come here for a warm place, use the toilets, free Wi-Fi. Their teas and coffees are free in here as well. They've got a little lounge upstairs where you can hang about uh, on the sofa. So yeah, very friendly and very welcoming. And of course you've got local libraries. That one behind me obviously is the Newcastle City Centre one just off Northumberland Street. You can hang around all day, you'll get a free tea or coffee. You've got access to all sorts of support uh, like Citizens Advice. They'll direct you to the People's Kitchen if you need fed later on. And um, they've got a free telephone service. Um, yeah, and apparently there's some books in there that you can flick through as well. So yeah, you can hang around there all day. So there you go, there's three just in the NE1 area, but you've also got the Discovery Museum, you've got the Seven Stories Bookshop, but also you've got St Vincent's near Oosburn as well, plus one or two others. Uh, but they're all around the region. I would just go on the Newcastle uh, or local council website, or you can just Google uh, Winter Wellbeing Centres near me, and it'll come up with the list where you can go. Don't be ashamed. If you need to go somewhere, 
um, if your mental health's been affected, if you're cold, just get out the house, go to these centres that are going to be near you and just, you know, sit, chat. Um, some of them even offer um, kind of skill hubs where you can learn how to um, cook, for example. Um, but check out the website and the local centre to find out exactly what they offer. If you'd like to see more videos like this and be notified the moment I release the next one, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Now, of course, um, we've just got two birthdays as well. Today, it's Newcastle United's 130th birthday. Happy birthday, Newcastle United. But also as well, it's the 1900th anniversary of when the Romans first come and started to build a wall and when they built um, the bridge on the town called Pons Alias. But yeah, back to Newcastle United, 130th birthday. And uh, they're currently, uh, as you probably know, in uh, Saudi Arabia and Riyadh for their training camp whilst the World Cup is going on. And uh, recently, two or three nights ago, they had a fan event at, a, at the Hyatt Regency, I think it is, where they had about 90 to 100 fans, um, individuals who have travelled from the UK, but also local fan groups from expats who live in that particular area, but also uh, fan groups from Kuwait and Oman and Dubai as well. Last night, of course, Newcastle played the current Saudi champions Al Hilal uh, and won 5-0 with um, two goals by Joe Linton, two by Miggy Almiron and uh, Dylan Stevenson. He scored uh, the final one, so um, a really good performance. Of course, it's just a friendly. We shouldn't look too deeply into it, but uh, it was a great opportunity for the, for the guys to have a leg stretch and to bang some goals in. But obviously, the big bit of news this week was the um, gossip that Newcastle United owners could potentially drop Newcastle United and buy Man United. When I first heard that and somebody asked me the question, I said it's utter nonsense. I looked a little bit deeper into it, um, found out where the source of it was coming from, and I didn't even think it was worthy of a video. You couldn't have a, an adult conversation in any sense talking about this because the PIF, Saudi Arabia, are not going to sell Newcastle United. There's just no credence in, in it whatsoever. It comes on the back of um, an interview that the Saudi sports minister, Prince Abdelaziz bin Turki Al Faisal, uh, when he kind of uh, opened the suggestion that a private Saudi Arabian company could buy a Premier League club, which is entirely feasible. Um, and then it went on to where this gossip is coming from, is from Simon Chadwick. He's a professor of sport and geopolitical economy at the Schema Business School. He was holding a, an interview with The Athletic about um, possible purchases of Man United and Liverpool. He kind of made a throwaway remark to say it's not entirely inconceivable that the PIF could dump Newcastle and buy Man United. I'll put it another way, it's not impossible for Newcastle not to pick up another point and then get relegated this season. Nonsense, isn't it? Not even worthy of a conversation. Well, that's exactly what this is. It isn't even worthy of a conversation. It's not going to happen. Simon Chadwick has no connection with Newcastle United. He has no connection with Saudi Arabia in the PIF. It was an off-the-cuff comment in an interview and shouldn't hold any water or credibility with anybody tempted to try and generate some interest in this particular conversation. It's utter, utter nonsense. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget, if you want to see me stripped back given my opinions on various meaty topics, uh, just consider becoming a, a channel, uh, joining my channel membership scheme. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe, leave your comments below um, if you want me to cover anything else. And until next time, catch you later.